larger building than was previously there. Any other members want to speak? Jews? I'm sorry, just, just, just going back to the, to the guidance, uh, as PG7 council won't refer to it, it's not referred to in the report. So I just wondered, which is 30 years old, but that doesn't make it as relevant as if it is. <laughs> As Councillor Alston has, has alluded to, the document is, is now 32 years old. Um, it still forms part of the development plan. It's a supplementary planning guidance that has never been revoked. So it is, it does still form part of our, our development pra uh, plan. Um, but, but since that, that document was um, uh, published and, and, and um, adopted by the Council, um, obviously there have been a raft of changes in national policy. So the weight to be afforded to that document, given its age, and that there are now more up-to-date policies, particularly contained in the National Planning Policy Framework um, and other guidance from, from government, um, the weight to be afforded to that document is now, is, is now uh, much limited to what it would have been back in 30-odd uh, years ago. Um, and so, so I think Councillor Elton has, has already quite rightly said that um, I think to try and uh, justify reasons for refusal for a, a, a policy that is, is so old and, and out of date um, could cause problems uh, at any subsequent fear, uh, given that advice has moved on and we do now have the National Plan Policy Framework. Any other comments, questions? The office is But anyway, we've got 65 signatures on this petition 
And I'd like to say that they're not just individuals, they are households. So we haven't got 65 people against this. We've got something like 200 or more. And also, um, if this is gonna be a 24 hour car park. And if you look now on the um, rush hours on Conway Street, you can't get into Simpson Street and Parkfield Avenue. We even have on, on Simpson Street um, a sign saying to get away, which nobody hardly bothers to do. Our biggest concerns are obviously for the children, because these would be years where they're play streets, and the traffic is horrendous as it is. So to put the traffic going up and down the two streets, especially as I say on the rush hour, it's just ridiculous. And also I'd like to say, um, how many car parks do we want? Within minutes of where we live, I can name eight car parks. So how many do we need? We have Europa Boulevard, we have the Boulevard itself, Hemingford Street, we have Asda's car park, the new one, we've got the Market car park, the High Rise car park in Bonner Road, the, uh, the one in Old Bingo in uh, Clorton Road, the one atop of uh, Exmoor Street, another one in Clorton Road. So I just can't understand why you're passing this. We would rather have houses residential. That's what it was before. Why can't we have it again? That's all I've got to say. Thank you.
Thank you again, Chair, for the opportunity to speak this evening. I do hope you and your fellow members are able to support your, recommend your officer's recommendation and approve the scheme. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Bay Street, and I, I, I can remember that. So I, I believe that putting a 48 space car park, literally cheap by jowl, with these residential streets does pose a direct threat to the safety of the uh, pedestrians and the people who live in these areas. And I, I, do, I am concerned about highway safety. And I think finally, there's also a danger that the, the cars parked in these um, car parks will become a target for crime and again will, will contribute to uh, fundamentally changing the character of this residential area. If we can finally say the report um, does refer to national planning policy framework, which states that, quote, encouragement should be given to solutions which support reductions in greenhouse gas emissions and reduce congestion. In my view, for the reasons I've mentioned, Chair, this scheme will definitely increase both greenhouse ga gas emissions and congestion. So it clearly goes against the national planning policy framework in that respect. It's therefore my, my, my belief that for all of those reasons, having regard to those UDP policies, HSS, HS15, TRA, TR, TR9, this proposed development will clearly have a massively adverse impact on the character of this area and the existing residential immunity. And in closing, as the report says, and as the petitioner said, there is no requirement for additional parking in this area. There, there is already a huge number of car parks nearby, and in my view, this will clearly result in, in an oversupply of parking spaces. So, for all those reasons, Chair, I would ask the committee to refuse this application. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, can I just ask the operative whether the, the government is concerned um, of the council regarding road safety and emissions? Thank you, through you, Chair. In terms of these two um, car parks, it's, it's our view that they won't generate any additional traffic in their own regard. Um, they are on Conway Street, um, it's heavily traffic flowed. They are on Conway Street, which is heavily traffic flowed. Um, what's, what's more likely to happen is that the uh, traffic on Conway Street um, that's already using the road. May, may choose to use these car parks um, instead of the ones closer into town. In terms of the accesses into the, the car parks, they are actually close to Conway Street, they're not um, within the residential sections of these roads. So the vehicles themselves that will be accessing these car parks will not be passing in front of the residential properties. They will actually stay quite close to Conway, um, Conway Street itself. So, We've taken the view that, um, that we will not generate additional traffic. The number of vehicles that will use the car parks won't be high, and that the, um, safe, there will be no safety issues there in relation to these car parks. Okay, thank you for that. C can I just ask um, the members of the public if they could just keep their voices down, please? If you want to talk amongst yourselves, but you know, we need to hear what people are saying here. Thank you. So, Thank you, Chair. Given the proximity of this um, proposal to huge streets of loads of kids, I'm surprised, surprised at the first of all, that the team suggested that a car park to go there. How a car park before it hits places is not going to encourage more traffic coming out of the road is quite beyond me. In addition to that, do you think what should green alternatives out on the main? Is there any green alternatives? Green? Is it just a surprise? Just a surprise? Well,
uh, the area. The National Planning Policy Framework says local authorities should support a pattern of development that facilitates the use of sustainable transport. And this application clearly runs counter to that objective. Uh, in addition, I would say that policy TR9 states that in assessing off-street parking provision associated with new development proposals, the local planning authority will be guided by the availability in the locality of alternative modes of transport. And clearly, there are abundant alternatives uh, in situ here. Uh, secondly, the land is designated as primarily residential. Uh, moreover, the established community on Simpson Street and Park 11 clearly benefit from the grassed area along Conway Street, and this is complemented by a similar strip on the opposite side of Conway Street. This provides an important buffer against noise and pollution. And this will change completely if this development proceeds. I think we should be very clear about that. And I cannot agree with the officer's view that this development would not have an adverse impact onto the character of the area or existing residential amenity. And finally, I'm also concerned about vehicles exiting the Simpson Street um, car park, which is the one on the left on the screen. Um, the, I don't believe they will necessarily turn right onto Conway Street. The traffic here, as was mentioned earlier, frequently backs up from the junction with Exmouth Street. Uh, and there will be a temptation for vehicles to exit left out of Simpson Street car park and access Conway Street via Simpson Street and then around through Parkfield Avenue. So I therefore question, as stated in the report, that there are no highway safety issues relating to the proposal. I don't accept that. And I'm very much minded to, um, to oppose the application. Any other members want to speak before? Thanks, Chair. I do hear all of the very real concerns that people have presented to the committee this evening. I was just curious, I noted from the, um, the applicant or his agent, he was speaking of this land being purchased from the council the previously in the council membership. And I, I just, you know, I do point out the irony of the fact that the leader of the council comes to speak against this application tonight, yet the council blocks off this piece of land. And therefore, we as a council should be mindful that these type of applications will be forthcoming. child safety issues, issues around the elderly and their safety and all the other matters that have been expressed. Thank you. Anybody else like to speak? 